Hey everybody, it's Voltar here, and today we're going to be talking about the Wii U in this very rough and poorly edited video. Now I apologize for that, but I'm just shooting this as I go along because I'm investigating this problem and I don't have all the answers. This is just a play-by-play -play of what I have so far. Now if you didn't know, the retro gaming media, gaming journalists, YouTubers, all of those ilk have been reporting that the Wii U is in a state of failure. Evidently, these systems are dying left and right, and it is because of some sort of NAND or eMMC memory problem that's causing the memory contents to corrupt, making them bricked, making them unrepairable. Well, I am investigating this because throughout all of these articles and all of these YouTube videos, I've not seen any substantiating evidence or proof of this. I want to better understand this to see if I can help people. Now, I have bought five systems out of my own pocket, trying to find a system that exhibits this memory failure. I know they exist. I've not been able to get one, but every system that I've purchased were all bricked with the same error codes that have been reported as otherwise being, for the most part, unrecoverable. That's the 160-0101 and the 160-0103. Now, all five systems exhibit all of those codes. The system that we're going to be fixing today has both the 0101 and the 0103. Now, I would love to get my hands on a NAND corrupted Wii U to see if I can recover the memory, rework the chip, or rework a new uh, EMMC replacement or an um, an SD replacement because really an SD SDHC is the same thing as EMMC. The only difference is is it's not secured, but it's the same protocol. So having said that, I still want to get on that, but this fixed all five systems and it's just a piece of software that runs on a Raspberry Pi Pico through only eight bucks. Quite phenomenal. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to fix this system. Hopefully it's worth the eight dollar investment for you to just try to see if this fixes your problem. Now really what, what we're doing here is we're just fixing the title ID that somehow gets corrupt in memory. Now that doesn't mean that all of the memory is being corrupt in the NAND or the EMMC. This just means that something has happened, either the system for whatever reason got the information mixed up of where it's supposed to point to to launch the OS menu, to want to launch the actual OS. So we're going to be using Gary Otternick's UDP IH software. Now this exploits the Wii U's USB host stack descriptor and it allows us to inject a payload so that we can run unsigned code as soon as we turn this on. And it's just a little piece of software that runs on a Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to show you how to load the Pico up with it. I'm going to show you how to prep an SD card. And I'm going to show you, hopefully, how you guys can get over this error message and get your Wii U's back in order. Otherwise, if your NAND's truly corrupt, unfortunately, this probably isn't going to help you. But I have a feeling I'm five for five. I know that's a very small sample pool, but it's got to help somebody out there. So let's see if this will help you guys Stay tuned, strap on, and let's fix this system. Now before we get started, we simply need to load our Pico with the appropriate software. So I'm going to open a web browser and I'm going to navigate to Gary Odernick's GitHub where he has his UDPIH software, otherwise known as USB descriptor parsing is hard. And this is just going to run a little USB stack exploit that effectively lets us boot off of the SD card without any sort of soft mod or pre-modification and we can load a nice menu and have some diagnostic options. So having said that, we're at the GitHub, we're using a Pico, we'll scroll down to the Pico instructions and we're going to click on the releases page right here. All we need to do is this udpih.uf2 file, we need to download it. So let's save this. I'm just going to put it here in this udpih folder for safekeeping so that I know where it's at. Now we're going to go and we're going to load this onto our Pico. This is very simple. All we're going to do is hold the boot button down on the Pico, plug it into USB, and as far as the computer is concerned, it will look like a removable drive like any other USB or flash stick. So watch very carefully. Now we have our Raspberry Pi Pico booted here. All we're going to do is we're just going to click open or view files to open it just as if it was any other um, flash drive. And we're going to go to that folder here where we stored that UDPIH file. And this is just going to bake this firmware into the Pico. 
so that it can be used. Now when you copy this over, it's automatically going to install and it's automatically going to flash it. That's all you have to do. You can unplug your Pico. It's 100% ready to go. It's that easy. Now our Raspberry Pico is all set. We're all done there. Let's hit back once. And when we get back to the main GitHub here, scroll down until you see the booting, the recovery menu text right here. We're going to click on the recovery menu link. And the only thing that we need to do here is we just need to save the recovery menu file to the SD card. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. The recovery menu file lives in the root of a FAT32 formatted SD card, which that's what this folder represents. So just put the recovery menu in the root and you're all done. Now let's get over to the Wii. Now our SD card is inserted. The only thing remaining here is our Raspberry Pi must be connected at the right appropriate time. Now we're going to turn on the Wii U and we're going to connect this USB cord here to only one of the two front USB ports. We're going to wait until we hear the drive initialize right before or right after we see the Wii U menu. So plug this in once again right after you hear that drive initialize or right when you see that Wii U menu populate on the display. Okay, let's give it a shot. Excellent. We're in like Flynn. Now the first thing that you're going to want to know is that the two buttons here, eject and power, these control this menu. Now eject is going to move down the menu and the power button is basically just going to be an OK button. Now there's a few things here that you might want to get before moving forward. First of all, I like to go ahead and I like to dump the CPROM and the OTP. This is great to have in case we have other failures. Now we've dumped these, we'll press the eject button to move back. And typically the way to fix this problem is to move into the set cold boot title. So I'm just going to press the eject button several times. Press the power button to move in here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to recache in the USA operating system. Now, of course, we're using USA because this is a USA Wii U. Let's give this a shot. Now, we're all good there. From this point, you can just do a hard power off, restart the Wii U, and see if you can get beyond that bricked error message and see if this thing works just fine. I have a feeling it's going to work great. Now, if you're seeing this screen, Good news, you've just unbricked the operating system and you could reset your Wii back up. Pat yourselves on the back. Now we're just going to load our Splatoon disk here and guys, this is working. Now this specific system was throwing both an 0101 and an 0103 system error. Every time you booted the system, there was nothing you could do to bypass this until we used Gary's d delicious little tool here and we got into our recovery menu and we reflashed well, we really recached the operating system title file here, and it's been working fantastic. I am five for five. That's wonderful news, not definitive, but it looks like this might be very promising for a lot of people with just an $8 development board. That's phenomenal. The takeaway here is do not believe all of the clickbaity, fear-mongering faux journalists as well as the YouTubers who aren't interested in exploring solutions or even exploring what a problem is. They're just interested in engagement and fear-mongering because that's what brings them the clicks. Guys, take care. Until we meet again, I hope everyone's doing well out there. Let's just keep helping each other. And if we all do things like this, problems that we all have will always become much smaller and smaller and smaller. Take it easy.